P Patricia Gibson. Thank you, Mr Chair. And I'm delighted once again to lead from my party in this debate on calls to ban commercial breeding for laboratories and to implement reform to approve non-animal methodologies. And I want to thank the Honourable Gentleman from Kershulton and Wellington for opening this debate so comprehensively. Like so many of my constituents in North Ayrshire and Arran, I am one of the majority of those who believe that we need to act on what is now widely accepted and has been widely um, explained across this chamber as the unethical, cruel, immoral, counterproductive and damaging use of animals in experiments. And of course, we have debated this matter before, most recently, I think, October last year, October 2021. Um, we've debated it many times, but it keeps coming back to us via the Petitions Committee because it's an issue which is simply not going to go away. And the huge numbers who repeatedly sign these petitions about this matter ensures that it will keep coming back for debate unless and until common sense prevails, until science prevails, which inevitably it must. But we need that to happen as soon as possible for a whole range of reasons, much of which we've heard today. But I, before I go on further, Mr Chair, I want to thank all the organisations which have provided such excellent briefings for today's debate, such as the Betsy Beagle Ambassador for the Life on Earth campaign, FRAME, the Fund for the Replacement of Animals in Medical Experiments, the RSPCA, and PETA, the People for Ethical Treatment of Animals Foundation, and a whole range of other organisations who have campaigned for decades on this issue. It is the case that animal experiments fail the search for human treatment and cures. Indeed, um, penicillin stayed on the shelf for over a decade because the rabbits that that great Scott Alexander Fleming tested it on led him to believe that it would be ineffective in humans. And there's a mountain of evidence to show this and why we need a rigorous public scientific hearing to demonstrate this. Anyone who wishes to argue the opposite without any confidence and credibility should relish the, the opportunity to demonstrate this using the forum of a public scientific hearing. Now, we know that there are some members of this House and some in the government benches who would argue to support the status quo, yet in the repeated debates we have on this issue, they never seem to turn out to defend that position, um, except for the, the Minister, of course, who has, who has little choice. Um, but, you know, we have... MPs in this House who, who believe that the, the situation that we currently have is the correct one, but if that is genuinely a held view, then it should be able to be defended. And if it cannot be defended, then it ought not to be happening. And whilst we wait and push for change in this area, the treatment and search for cures to terrible diseases such as cancer are, according to the US-based National Cancer Institute, being lost because studies in rodents have been believed. So far from assisting and advancing the treatments for cures for terrible human diseases, which we all want to see, the use of animals in experiments is actively frustrating this end. The problem with the petition mentioning the non-animals and non-animals methods committee as called for is the fear is that this would only be able to act in an advisory capacity, whereas a public scientific hearing would require animal researchers to prove their claims about the efficacy of the use of animals in, 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 in animal testing. And this rigorous scientific hearing would, would, would show that the arguments put forward simply don't hold up to scrutiny. Now, reducing licences um, and the range of animals upon which tests can be carried out, that's all very well and good, and they're important steps. But we need to be much more stringent about this. The best way, the only way forward, is a robust public scientific hearing to really secure the kind of overhaul of the industry which so many of us want to see. And the overhaul of this industry, of course, is challenging because we know that interests have grown up around it which defend it even in the face of evidence that it isn't really the best way forward, and it's certainly not the best way forward for treating diseases, nor indeed for animals. It's widely reported by experts that 90% of new medicines fail to pass human trials, 
because animals cannot predict human responses. The former editor-in-chief of the British Medical Journal has indicated that it's almost impossible to rely on, the, on most animal data to predict whether or not an intervention will have a favourable clinical benefit risk in human subjects. And if this continues to be so, endorsement and funding of preclinical animal research seems, at the very least, misplaced. And this would very much chime with the conclusions of Dr Richard Klausner, who was referenced by my honourable friend, a director of the National Cancer Institute, that we, sim that, we have, that we have cured mice of cancer for decades, but it simply didn't work in humans. Therefore, we can see that in the world of science and the pharmaceutical industry itself, it is openly acknowledged that animal models on drug development simply don't work. But we should have cause for optimism, Mr Chair, because on the 4th of January, the current Prime Minister delivered a speech. And in that speech, he set out his priorities for 2023. And he declared, and I quote, I want to make this country a beacon of science. Now, the UK is, of course, comprised of four nations. So I will assume, I will generously assume, when the Prime Minister said that, he meant to say the UK and not this country. But putting that aside, I look forward to his government following good on that commitment, following the science on this issue, taking note and acting upon the significant body of science which tells us that animal experiments are not helpful and, worse, can even be obstructive as we seek to treat and cure a whole range of human diseases. And it's worth recalling the remarks of Dr Lindsay Marshall, the UK's biomedical science advisor for the Humane Society International, who said, and I quote, the UK cannot expect to have, a world, to have world leading science innovation whilst we rely on failing animal based research methods that are rooted in the past. Animal models are really bad at telling us what will happen in a human body. And went on to say, sometimes this is dangerously misleading. And this is despite the UK government response to this petition indicating that, and I quote, the UK's strength in research and innovation puts it at the forefront of global science. The government is committed to supporting this science base. So if we're following the science, there really shouldn't be a problem here after we have a, a robust scientific public, public scientific hearing. Now, there, was, there has been much excitement amongst campaigners recently when President Biden signed into law the Food and Drugs Administration Modernization Act, which removed the mandatory requirement that US-based animal tests are used in human drug development. This is a hugely significant step forward, but animal data can still be used if those developing drugs choose to use them. There is no way around the fact that a public scientific hearing would be enormously helpful and useful as a global reference point for drug development. The 1986 Animal Scientific Procedures Act and its three R's, replacement, reduction and refinement, established in 1959 for humane experimental techniques on animals is a concept developed decades ago to benefit individual experimental design, not to address the need to understand and develop treatments for many human diseases. A three hours policy, as we've heard from a number of people around this chamber, is not fit for the purpose of advancing scientific progress through a shift to innovation without using animals. There is a significant body of scientific thought which believes there is urgent and pressing need to modernise UK research to keep pace with advancements. So far from the Prime Minister talking about being a world leader, we need to modernise in order to be so. This requires redirecting resources from unreliable experiments on animals and shifting a focus more fully on superior non-animal methods which will benefit humans and, of course, animals as well. And, indeed, the world of science. Otherwise, both animals and patients who are looking and waiting for treatment to terrible diseases will continue to be failed by outdated methods. Is this really compatible? Could anybody argue if this picture is really compatible with the Prime Minister's vision of the UK becoming a beacon of science? This government has accepted that animals 
are sentient beings, and that is enshrined in law. However, it's a source of deep frustration, disappointment, concern, and even anger that this recognition of sentience does not appear to extend to animals in laboratories, which are subject to painful, cruel, and distressing <laughs> procedures, which are not necessary, following which the vast majority are killed. The recognition of sentience must be extended to all animals in the Welfare Act and the Animal Sentience Bill, so they can be protected by the unnecessary suffering clause. The experiments to which animals are subjected are not crucial for the development of any new human medicines, so we are often told. On the contrary, these experiments are failing the search for human treatments and cures, which is shown by unequivocal evidence and widely reported in the peer-reviewed medical literature. We've heard today that the regulatory requirement that animals be used in tests before proceeding to human trials was first established in 1946 in the Nuremberg Code. Since then, science has outdated 77 years. Why are we still using outdated laws to govern human medical research practice? Where else has that happened where there's been no change in 77 years? It is nonsensical and indefensible. Our EU partners are moving away from animal experiments. We need a rigorous, public, scientific, transparent hearing so that we can have a full scientific debate on the reasons for banning animal experiments. And those in disagreement can present their evidence for doing so in a transparent and public forum. And I keep asking, Mr Chair, those who would defend the current position, why would they shy away from that level of transparency? And if those of us who wish to see an end to animal experiments are correct in our views and our beliefs and the evidence that, that is presented, it will accelerate the arrival of human treatments and cures while also freeing animals from the cruel and unnecessary fate which awaits them in laboratories. And I'm hoping when the minister gets to her feet, she will have taken full cognizance of the very powerful and reasoned arguments made across the chamber today and, how, and she will respond by telling us how her government has every intention of moving away from the use of animal experiments as our EU neighbours are doing. And I'm hoping that she will mandate, and her government will mandate, a rigorous public scientific hearing on this matter, which will show beyond doubt that, and transparently that lab and animal models are not capable of predicting the response of human patients, as well as the need to ensure all creatures are recognised as sentient beings in the animal welfare and animal sentient bills. This is what the vast majority of the population across the UK wants to happen, and it's long past time that this government acted.